Welcome to the second showing of SOMO TV and the first of 2015. I am Alan Tobin with Tiffany Wright and Brandon Schottick, uh, PR manager of Special Olympics. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, indoors are coming this coming up week. Do the athletes have to wear their Special Olympics badges at all times? Absolutely. So um, just to give you guys a little of information, uh, we do have our state indoor games coming up um, this weekend, the tw March 27th through the 29th. Um, at these games is bowling and basketball. Those are the only two sports that are going on, one team sport and one individual sport. Um, just like with any other games, we, we do want our athletes to um, be prepared, and for safety reasons, we do want them to wear their, their ID badges at all times. Can you tell us a little bit more about opening ceremonies? So opening ceremony will be on Friday, like it usually is, on March 27th. Um, it'll be at Gammon Field, which will be outside. So fingers crossed that, you know, end of March weather, it's not rainy and cold. Um, but if it is, I know that um, Mandy and the rest of the team have been hard at work for a long time making sure that um, it's going to look as great as possible for the athletes. And uh, we will have plenty of soldiers on hand to, to welcome you guys as you, guys, as you parade in. And it's just it's going to be a good time. I know that. We'll have the Army Band there performing for you and a couple of other surprises as well. Um, if I want to volunteer, where do I have to go to sign up? Uh, for indoor games specifically, I'd, I'd suggest that you go to somo.org, S-O-M-O.org slash indoor. Uh, but for any of our other competitions or any of our other events that are going on throughout the year, um, just go to somo.org and um, there's a search bar at the top if you're looking for something specific. And there should be um, also a volunteer tab um, on the page as well that'll take you to where you need to go. Tell us a little bit more about the involvement with the the soldiers have with the indoor games. So it's been uh, since 2006, I believe, uh, the last time we were there at a statewide competition level. Uh, we're going to have roughly 1,800 athletes alone there. So between athletes, coaches, parents, and staff, definitely more than 2,200 people are on base. And I know that um, with working uh, with the troops the last couple of months, making sure that the event is as is, is planned as possible as they're looking forward to bringing you guys back um, because it has been so long. There'll be our volunteers, our, our main source of volunteers while we're on base. Um, in addition to the competition on base, we'll also have basketball competition at the Waynesville schools and some bowling will actually um, bleed over into Rolla as well. Uh, but I know that the, the troops are very much looking forward to, to having you guys back is just as much as you guys are um, looking forward to being back. I know I enjoyed being there with the soldiers that they would do push-ups and give us some of their hats and pins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they like to spoil you, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, the athletes, coaches, and chaperone are allowed to eat on the base where are the parents and friends allowed to eat at? That's a great question, Tiffany. We will. Um, we don't have anything specifically set up, but there is something on base called the Post Exchange. They have like a Charlie Subs and a couple of different places inside. It's like a small mall almost where people can eat. Also, I believe there's a Burger King and maybe a Subway on base. Um, so they just won't be able to eat at the barracks uh, or at the dining facility like you guys will be or at the actual areas or actually at the actual competition venues where you guys and the volunteers are going to eat as well. They're going to have to eat at the post exchange or um, some of the fast food places that are on base as well. How long does it take to set up and tear down? Um, just planning for the event alone. Uh, we've been planning this one for at least 10 to 12 months and um, getting down to, to um, show time in the next couple of days. We'll be heading down Wednesday, Wednesday morning probably to set up. So that's a full three days before competition begins. Um, so make sure that in addition to thanking the, the troops that you see volunteering this weekend that you thank all of the um, games management team members. They'll be wearing blue polos that say games management team. Make sure you thank them as well um, because they're the ones who've been working on it for a long time and making sure that it's, it's the best that it could possibly be for you guys.
And how many teams for the basketball is there? Oh, you're putting me on the spot. Um, I think the last time I talked to our sports department, I think it was maybe 400 teams, 500 basketball teams. So this is definitely, with the 1,800 athletes, this is our biggest statewide competition right now. Uh, we have three throughout the year with summer games in May and our outdoor games in September. And this is now our biggest one because we took bowling and basketball from summer and, and pulled them out and made this one. So this is the first time we've had an indoor games um, at this statewide level with bowling and basketball. So it's exciting, but it's also nerve-wracking knowing that this is the first time we've done this event. It's the first time that we've been back on base since 2006, and it's now our largest statewide competition. So um, a, lot of, a lot of people coming, that's for sure. Speaking of summer games, summer games is coming up. Can you tell me more about that? Most definitely. We'll be back in Springfield. So not only are we in, at a new location for indoor games, but we're also at a new location for summer games. Um, it'll be May 29th through the 31st. And it looks like a tentative schedule right now. We're looking at volleyball and soccer as our team sports on Friday. We're still not sure if we're going to have enough teams for soccer on Friday, but we're looking at, if we don't, maybe having a soccer clinic. Um, so that'll be fun to offer the athletes that aren't competing in volleyball. And then for Saturday, we'll have track and field, powerlifting, and aquatics. And then we'll finish things up on Sunday with more track and field. Um, where are the summer games being held at? So not only are we competing on the campus of Missouri State University, um, but we'll also have competition over at Drury University as well. They have a phenomenal pool aquatics center over there, so that's where our aquatics competition is going to be held. Will Bet to the Count be there? Absolutely. So that's one thing that I knew you would ask, um, <laughs> and I know a lot of other athletes are interested in it as well. As is Bessie the cow from um, our friends at Southwest Dairy. They they will bring they will bring the cow. They will bring the free ice cream. And I know that um, you guys aren't the only ones looking forward to it. I and the rest of the staff are definitely looking forward to that as well. So, and the time that the athletes are not competing, what? other activities are they allowed to do? Oh, we're not going to let you guys get bored by any <laughs> means. We have uh, plenty of different things that are going on throughout the weekend. So the theme of Summer Games is 80s. Um, so it's an all-out 80s kind of bash. So um, I expect to see your hair up um, in a full <laughs> 80s kind of do with um, six cans of hairspray throughout it and colored colored socks and leather jackets and plenty of fun stuff. Um, so we'll, we'll obviously have our healthy athletes in Victory Village and dance. Um, the Victory Village right now is going to be um, set outside um, on one of the streets, actually, and we'll have a, um, a performance from one of the performers that done at Branson. They're called Six. It's like six different performers from different time periods, um, the way I believe that <laughs> they're set up. Um, and they'll bring different antique cars. And so in addition to all that, you'll have your normal Victory Village kind of games and um, our pig racing um, that we debuted at Outdoor Games last year and a lot of just fun things for you guys to do. Will Governor Nixon be there? Um, I can't promise. I can't speak for the governor, um, but we will certainly invite him and his staff. Um, I know that we plan on also inviting Senator Blunt because he's from the Springfield area, and whenever we can bring out um, special dignitaries to come out and not just see you guys compete, but also see what else we do for you, like healthy athletes and anything else that shows that uh, we're much more than just a sporting organization, we definitely want to do that. So we will be making those invitations um, here pretty soon. Okay, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. As a sister, I understand what sports can do for a young person's self-confidence. As a sister and coach of a Special Olympics Missouri athlete, I understand what can be accomplished when people defy their expectations. I invite my fellow SOMO family members to pick up a clipboard and whistle and become a bigger part of the transformation and help get SOMO athletes off the sidelines and into the game. Find out more at SOMO.org slash coach.
It was senior year and the whole school was cheering for her and just seeing the smile on her face and then looking at the whole school and people were crying and people were cheering and just seeing how the whole school came together just for her was the most amazing thing ever. The Special Olympics has changed my life so dramatically. I truly realize that what I'm doing is for a great cause. It has helped me a lot to be fearless, you know, in the real world. I learned that friendship doesn't have women. My friends I've made through Special Olympics are the best people I've ever met in my life. And it's not about disabilities, but it's about celebrating their abilities. It makes you feel like a wonderful person and your life changes forever. I've made a difference. Now it's your turn to make a difference. We are champions together. Making a difference every day. I'm Allison D'Agostino here with uh, Eddie Slowikowski, Slo sorry, yeah. um, and he's a, one of the speakers for our leadership conference. Uh, what kind of stuff do you normally do when you're not speaking? What I normally do? Oh boy, well I like to, I like to exercise, I, I work out, uh, what I do for fun is uh, my wife and I spend a lot of fun time together with the kids and we go to movies, a lot of movies. Um, what else do we do? We love, like this time of year we go sledding like to go sledding in big sled hills um, and just kind of hanging out and we play a lot of a lot of family family game nights so we do a lot of monopoly and game of life and we do a lot of charades that's our that's our fun stuff yeah so i know uh, what you how, what got you into speaking but for the for those who weren't here to uh, learn what did get you into speaking? My mom got me into speaking. I, uh, I worked at CNN. I was going to be a reporter, and she had a speech she had to give. She was a speaker. It was a bunch of, a bunch of high school leadership teenagers, and she got sick. And so she asked me to fill in for her, and that's how, I, that's how it all began. I never thought I would do this with my life. Now I can't see myself doing anything else. It's been 22 years, and I just love it. And my mom, was the, she had the vision for me. And then when I got into it, it was like she was right. It was what I was meant to do. Yeah. And so you did like a whole bunch of things before doing that, right? Yeah, well, I was mainly I was focused on my athletics. I was a, a gold medal winner for the U.S. track and field team indoors in London, England. I, uh, I ran uh, college, All-American in college, and I ran for Nike, and I ran for Reebok for a little while. And so I got to run professionally for a little while. I was really focused on that until I landed an opportunity at CNN. Um, and so and at, C at CNN, uh, I thought I was going to be that, but I... I realized pretty quickly I, I wasn't going to do that. It wasn't it wasn't right fit for me. And then the speaking came, and then that was it. I never I've never looked back since then. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm very lucky. Yeah. So um, I've actually been thinking about it th uh, throughout your entire speech. What does Special Olympics mean to you? 
Inspiration. I mean, it just means, uh, I talk about, today's speech is all about being the very best you can be, the best version of you. And when I'm around the athletes in Special Olympics, they bring out the best in everyone around them because they just are so beautiful as who they are. You know, and they show us that to, to just be you. And, and the rest of us really all learn from that and get inspired. And we live better lives because of their example. And that's what I love most about it, what it, what it brings out in me. And it helps me remember, you know, this is how you're supposed to live. They're a shining example of what I'm striving to be more of. So. All right. Well, thank you for interviewing with me. No problem, Allison. Good to, good to meet you. You're doing a great job. Enjoy the show. She's awesome. <laughs> Keep going, Special Olympics. Keep inspiring. Peewee, high school or college football, coaches have made it possible for me to get where I am today as a Pro Bowl player in the National Football League. Knowing how influential coaches can be, I'd like you to be that influence as a coach for my friends like Tiffany here in Special Olympics, Missouri. I have the willpower to be the best athlete, but I need someone to teach my friends and me the skills. Pick up the clipboard and whistle and sign up to be a Special Olympics, Missouri coach today. Visit somo.org slash coach. I am pleased to announce that the board made a unanimous decision to enter into an agreement with the Jefferson City officials to locate the Training for Life Center on the 15.5 acres donated by the Farmer Holding Company and the Twee House Excavating. The decision was based in large part due to it's a place that our athletes can call home and call it their own which means that we would own the land in Jefferson City opposed to leasing the land in Columbia. We want to thank the Farmer Holding Company and Twee House Excavating for the donation, the very generous donation of the 15.5 acres at the northeast intersection of U.S. Highway 54 and Missouri Highway 179. This will make the Special Olympics Training for Life facility part of the southern gateway into our capital city. This 15 and a half acre site will be able to fulfill the needs of Special Olympians along with their families. Our community will benefit from this facility being based here as we are the central part of the country allowing thousands of families and their athletes to travel here for their training. a little bit about the plunge? Well, this is our KC Metro Plunge. It is the largest plunge in the state. Um, today we're looking at raising close to $300,000. That's our goal. Um, we have about 11 to 1,200 plungers um, that we're going to put them all through and hopefully in an hour and uh, get this place cleaned up and get out of here. This is um, one of the Special Olympics like largest signature fundraising events. Um, it, we raise a ton of money here um, and we give a lot of people um, kind of a view into athletes and what they're raising their money for. We have athletes as towel holders, um, the costume judges, all that kind of stuff. Um, just kind of showing people who they're giving money to and where this is all going.
I think the exact term is I got roped into it. Um, I came last year and I watched them do it, but I didn't actually jump in and they didn't really give me much of a choice this year. Um, my future sister-in-law made me do it. Uh, I'm from St. Louis, I've seen him do it up there, so I figured I'd give it a try. I'm expecting to not be able to feel anything, and I'm hoping someone just gives me a piggyback ride out of the water. I'm just expecting ice. Because <laughs> it's a good cause and we just want to keep raising money, I guess, and yeah, it's fun. This is my third year and I'm really excited that people aren't skating on the lake at the same time. We're about to plunge. <laughs> um, this is my third year doing it. I'm really glad that our student council has been able to do this every year. Special Olympics is our biggest like fundraising group that we try to give money to, so it's really important to us to support them. Welcome back. I'm Tiffany Wright with Alan Tobin and with Allison Diego Stino. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. How long have you been in Special Olympics? Um, for as long as I can remember, I believe I started in 2015, I think, or 2000, no, not, I didn't write, <laughs> uh, 2007 when I graduated high school and since then I've been just having such a great time. How does it feel to be the 2014 Athlete of the Year? Amazing. <laughs> um, I, I actually didn't expect it to happen. I mean I know I've been in, involved with Special Olympics a lot this past year and um, and I kind of felt like I needed something to show that I did a lot and to win Outstanding Athlete is just takes my breath away. <laughs> yeah. What are your hobbies? Uh, my hobbies, I actually have a lot, um, but to name a few, I guess, would be to um, watch different YouTube videos, um, hang out with some of my friends, uh, play games, and I also uh, like to read and write. I hear that you have your own YouTube channel and your own radio station. Yeah, um, I've actually had a YouTube channel uh, for eight years running. Um, I actually did have my first channel. I actually did did run for a little, for about four years and I got confused with Google Plus joining in with YouTube so I ended up creating a second one. But um, on my YouTube I make uh, karaoke videos, lyric videos, and I even do book readings of books that I have written over the years. And my radio show, um, you can actually access that on blogtalkradio.com. Um, it's actually really interesting because um, like I get to create whatever I can do whatever I want on the show um, I can do however many shows I want during the week and once a month I try to make sure I do an interview with someone it's really interesting work cool what sports do you do with Special Olympics and what is your favorite one um, over the years I've done uh, swimming bowling and basketball I've only done basketball once to see if I could actually do it because I know my dad did um, a long time ago uh, but I'd have to say my favorite is swimming because I've been doing swimming outside of Special Olympics since I was really young. Okay. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for watching SOMO TV. We will be back with our third episode in May. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah.